Today, we're talking about something really sweet, honey. Honey is a natural sweetener produced by bees from the nectar of flowers. While honey has been cherished throughout history for its sweet taste, it also has been valued for its numerous health benefits. Honey is mostly made up of sugar and water, with sugar making up about 95 to 99% of its dry weight. The main types of sugar in honey are fructose, which ranges from about 32.56% to 38.2% and glucose between 28.54% and 31.3%. Together, these make up about 85 to 95% of all the sugars in honey, which our bodies can easily absorb. However, this golden viscous liquid is more than just a sugar. It's a complex mixture of other components. What does this mean, Tara? Besides sugar and water, Honey has around 200 other substances like amino acids, vitamins, minerals, and enzymes. Yeah, I had to take a pause. It's that impressive. 200 other substances. That's a lot of substances. Honey's unique composition and its journey from flower to hive add to its mystique and the variety of flavors and colors available, which can vary dramatically depending on the flowers visited by the bees. I can't be the only one mesmerized by honey. Who's with me? The health benefits of honey have been recognized and utilized in many cultures around the world for centuries. People have been using honey since the Stone Age, about 8,000 years ago, as shown in ancient cave paintings. Cultures like the ancient Egyptians, Assyrians, Chinese, Greeks, and Romans used it for treating wounds and stomach issues. Honey is much more than a simple sweetener. Its myriad health benefits make it a valuable addition to a balanced diet and a natural remedy for various health issues. Now, to be clear, I'm not talking about eating a jar of honey. Shout out to, well, you know who you are a wonderful client who has been known to throw down a jar of honey in one sitting. I want to unpack some of the fascinating data, the evidence behind the claims of the wonders of honey. In particular, we're going to dive into the science of honey's role in blood sugar management. Honey might seem like an unlikely ally for those managing blood sugar dysregulation or diabetes given its sweet nature. However, it's not just any ordinary sweetener. Honey's unique composition and its effects on blood sugar levels differentiate it from regular sugars, making it a topic of interest in nutritional research and diabetic care. I've got some shocking news, friends. Are you ready for it? Despite its sweetness, honey has a lower glycemic index than sugar. Not only that, but it is also filled with numerous vitamins and minerals as shown here. If you are just listening to the audio, head to the show notes to check out the first link to see the visual or pop on over to YouTube to watch. Let's first take a look at this very interesting clinical trial I found. The research was published in the journal Endocrinology and Metabolic Syndrome in 2016, and the aim of the study was to assess the potential of honey as an affordable, natural alternative in treating 20 adult volunteers suffering with type 2 diabetes and its related metabolic complications. This is a small study, but one worth taking a look at. The study in question was an open, non-randomized clinical trial focusing on the safety and effectiveness of using honey as the sole treatment for a group of volunteers with type 2 diabetes. This was a phase 1 single-arm cohort prospective study, typically the stage where researchers take a new drug or treatment on a small group for the first time to assess its safety, establish a safe dosage range, and pinpoint side effects. In a single arm study like this one, all subjects are part of a single group receiving the same intervention, allowing for the monitoring of outcomes and adverse events over time. This approach is particularly useful for observing long-term effects that may not be apparent without extensive follow-up. 
an aspect difficult to achieve with other study designs. Prospective studies like this one track participants over time, reducing bias and more effectively establishing a timeline of exposure and disease, hence providing stronger evidence of causation. The primary outcome of this trial was binary, focusing on whether complications occurred or not with the study's endpoint and duration being determined by the safety and efficacy of the intervention. Given the uncertainty around the effects of high sugar honey as a standalone treatment for type 2 diabetes, three potential outcomes were considered for determining the study's endpoint. Firstly, should immediate negative effects occur, indicating the onset of short-term complications related to type 2 diabetes and its associated disorders, particularly coronary heart disease, the trial would be halted and conventional medicine treatment methods applied. Secondly, positive outcomes would see the trial extend for at least a year following the normalization of blood glucose levels without complications. Lastly, to fully ascertain the long-term safety and efficacy of the intervention in type 2 diabetes, ideally the study would continue indefinitely for at least 20 years, assuming blood glucose levels remain normalized and short-term complications did not arise. Development of long-term complications would prompt a comparison with traditionally treated patients, influencing the decision to continue or conclude the study based on these results. Very interesting stuff, my friends. Let's get into it. I had to interrupt this video and let you know about a free ebook I just created, The Ultimate Gluten-Free Guide. You definitely want to snag a copy for yourself. The link is in the show notes. I will also leave it as the first pinned comment. Enjoy! The volunteer patients stopped taking their usual medications and started consuming honey at a trial dose of two grams per kilogram per day, based on the average body weight of 75 kilograms, which equates to 150 grams, approximately 125 milliliters of honey each day. That's a lot of honey. If you're listening, my wonderful honey loving client, maybe you're onto something. Other than avoiding food preservatives, additives, and conventional sweets and beverages, there were no strict dietary restrictions. The caloric intake from the honey, roughly 450 calories from 150 grams, wasn't deducted from their regular meal plan. Additionally, patients were instructed to use honey as their sole sweetener and to increase the honey dosage two or threefold if they encountered any infections. In this study, three different types of honey were utilized, clover and citrus varieties from Egypt, Zizyphus honey from Yemen and Pakistan. The honey employed in the research was raw and unprocessed, meaning it had not been heated or irradiated. It was freshly collected and subsequently stored in dark containers at room temperature to preserve its natural qualities. The primary outcome of the study was focusing on the overall clinical condition of the participants. This includes assessments of general health, body weight, signs of dehydration, vital signs such as pulse and respiratory rate, blood pressure, exercise capacity, neurological function, condition of peripheral extremities, and eyesight. Secondary outcomes being tracked in the study encompass blood glucose levels, hemoglobin A1C values, presence of ketones and protein in urine, cholesterol levels, creatinine, blood urea levels, the urine albumin to creatinine ratio, ALT level, which is a marker of liver health, complete blood counts, as well as results from EKGs and echocardiograms, which predominantly are looking at heart health. Patient monitoring was conducted daily through direct appointments and phone calls. If the study continued, monitoring frequency was adjusted based on the patient's health status. The follow-up regimen included daily or alternative day random blood glucose and urinalysis, quarterly HbA1c tests, and annual checks for serum lipids, urine albumin creatinine ratio, kidney functions, EKGs, and echocardiograms. Eye examinations were carried out every three to six months or more frequently if eye issues were reported. 
Monitoring intensity varied with each patient's health needs. Tests for urine ketones, pH levels, and other markers were performed when diabetic ketoacidosis, DKA, or hyperosmolar hyperglycemic state, HHS, were suspected, which are complications of hyperglycemia, high blood sugar. The study was halted if significant metabolic disturbances were detected, transitioning the patient back to conventional treatments. The results were rather remarkable. During the honey intervention period, all of the patients experienced weight loss. Among the 12 participants with baseline hypertension, their blood pressure began to decrease and neared normal levels approximately six months following the beginning of the intervention. None of the participants exhibited any worsening of their cardiac conditions throughout the honey intervention period. Additionally, the four patients who had coronary heart disease at the start showed improvement in their cardiac health. Improvements were indicated by enhanced exercise tolerance, reduced frequency and duration of angina or similar pains, no EKG indications of myocardial ischemia, and better left ventricular function and ejection fraction as evidenced by echocardiogram results. The beneficial impacts of honey on the macrovascular complications of diabetes in these patients may stem from various factors, including weight loss, reduction of blood pressure in those with hypertension, lessening of post-meal blood sugar surges, and maintenance of APOA1 levels. We went in depth about APOA1 episode 21 if you missed it we dove into apoa1 and apob vitally important information and my number three episode to date the researchers pondered other potential mechanisms such as honey's influence on glucose spikes and the presence of atherogenic small ldl particles but stated that that would require further research and documentation the researchers concluded that honey is more than just a combination of sugars and water, contrary to common belief. It is a multi-faceted substance encompassing trace elements, acids, vitamins, enzymes, and phenolic compounds. Additionally, honey includes compounds that are yet to be identified with new analytical methods currently being developed for this purpose. Honey is not merely a food item with medicinal properties. It is fundamentally a medicinal substance that offers nutritional value. This was a very interesting study, and I put a link down below if you wanna check it out for yourself. If you are currently on diabetic or anti-hypertensive medications, this is not an endorsement to stop taking them and start consuming honey. I just think it is very interesting and worth talking about. I want to underscore a few things. The benefits are primarily attributed to the unique components found in honey, such as phenolic acids and flavonoids, which are powerful antioxidants that help to neutralize free radicals and reduce oxidative stress in the body. If you're not new here, you know we talk about free radicals and oxidative stress a lot. There's a reason for that, friends. It matters. Another study published in the journal Complementary Therapies in Clinical Practice explored the effects of honey compared to other sweeteners on people with type 1 diabetes and healthy individuals. It involved 50 diabetic patients and 30 non-diabetic controls, all around 10 years old. They underwent tests to measure blood sugar responses and C-peptide levels after consuming glucose, sucrose, or honey. A quick sidebar for those not familiar with C-peptide. C-peptide is a piece of the insulin puzzle. C-peptide is a substance that the pancreas releases into the body alongside insulin, which is a hormone that helps regulate blood sugar by allowing cells to absorb glucose for energy. In type 1 diabetes, the pancreas can't produce insulin, so people need insulin injections to help their body use glucose. In type 2 diabetes, the body may not make enough insulin or doesn't use it properly, 
and over time, individuals might also need medications or insulin injections. Practitioners measure C-peptide levels to understand certain health issues, such as why someone might be experiencing low blood sugar or to check how well the pancreas is working in producing insulin. Although testing C-peptide levels alone are not the way we diagnose diabetes, this measurement can provide important information for diagnosing and managing diabetes. The study showed that honey led to lower blood sugar spikes and higher C-peptide levels than sucrose or glucose, suggesting it's less disruptive to blood sugar levels. This was consistent in both diabetics and non-diabetics. Honey's benefits may also be due to its anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, and antimicrobial properties. It also has a lower glycemic index, making it potentially safer for diabetics. I do need to state, as did the authors, that despite promising findings, more research is needed before honey can be recommended as a sugar substitute for people with type 1 diabetes. However, its potential to stimulate pancreatic beta cells could make it useful in future diabetic treatments. Lastly, let's take a look at a review published in the journal Oxidative Medicine and Cellular Longevity in 2018, which recognized honey as a potent natural antioxidant with therapeutic potential. Studies indicate that honey influences various cellular processes and signaling pathways. It interacts with components within cells, such as initiating cell death mechanisms, activating inflammation-fighting proteins, and stopping cells from multiplying improperly. Honey also helps in reducing inflammation, supporting immune function, and preventing cell damage. I wanted to share this particular article with you because we all know the impact inflammation has on the body, the impact with disease. When we talk about blood sugar management, we need to consider inflammation. A review published in the journal European Cardiology Review in 2019 stated that after thoroughly examining how type 1 and type 2 diabetes affect metabolism and the role of inflammation, it's becoming clear that future studies should aim at a combined approach to reduce different inflammation pathways. Researchers are studying how obesity, fat in the body, gut bacteria, and the pancreas's beta cell function contribute to diabetes. They're also looking into how inflammation plays a role in both types of diabetes and its related health problems. Studies suggest that future diabetes research should focus on reducing inflammation through various methods to better prevent and manage the disease. Honey is gaining more and more popularity in the research realm, and I feel this is largely due to its impact on the immune system, which will have an impact throughout the body because our bodies do not operate in silos contrary to the conventional medicine model. If you haven't seen the video I did on the difference between conventional and functional medicine, I put it up right here so you can go and check it out.